Hey everyone, Travis here at the Smite World Championships, the first ever one. I'm joined by Barracuda, who is one of the more popular faces of Smite these days, from what, I, what I've been told at least. So he's actually the, the hunter, or for those uh, who play other MOBAs, AD carry. Uh, so first off, Barracuda, you guys are considered to be either the, the second or the first team favorites uh, for this tournament, depending on who you ask. Uh, where do you think you guys will end up? I think definitely we'll be first or second place. Like my team has put in so much work for this tournament. This is the biggest tournament Smite's ever seen before, and we have we feel more confident now than we've ever felt before. And every week, every scrim, like we're just getting more confident. We're getting better at picks and bans. We're just developing our own style. We're developing our own sense of the game better every single time. And this is the best we've ever played. Now, because this is kind of my first Smite event, I'm I'm kind of learning about what the eSport is like. I think you're probably one of the best people to talk to about that. Uh, so first off, uh, maybe a little bit of background on you. When did you start playing and then competing in Smite um, as a professional? I started playing Smite probably July 2012. And I was in college. I was working a lot. So I didn't really have much time to really devote to it professionally. But I started playing Smite professionally, I would say... November of 2013 and that's when we get sponsored by cognitive gaming and that was when I really just kind of exploded on the scene We won 12 tournaments in a row back to back on on the online weekly tournaments And that was where I really got my fan base and got popular yeah. Now Smite's still growing, but at this event we see a prize pool that's over two million dollars uh, Where do you see the eSport right now in comparison to some of the other uh, popular eSports out there? I think we're pretty close to them, to be honest. Like, obviously, we don't have the player base of, I would say, like Counter Strike, Dota 2, League of Legends, but it's awesome for us that we have a prize pool this big. So it kind of makes us more respectable in the MOBA scene. And I think from the other MOBAs looking at us, like, we just kind of came onto the scene randomly, like, oh, that game's like, they're trying to be like us. Yeah. And it's the fact that we have a prize pool this big and there's like 45,000 people watching it online right now. It just, it makes it a lot more respectable as a game and as a scene in general. So I think we'll get a lot more respect from the players, the, from league pros, from Dota pros. And that's, that's really exciting for me because I watch a lot of other games. I watch pretty much every LCS event, all of their games. I watch Dota 2 tournaments. I don't really understand like what exactly the mechanics of the pros are doing. But since I play a MOBA game as well, I can kind of break down and I watch a lot of double lift and he's inspired me a lot. And I can take his mechanics that he's doing in League and adapt them to my mechanics that I'm doing in Smite. Hopefully he doesn't see this interview because the last thing he needs is an <laughs> ego boost. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, what, what drew you to Smite over some of the alternatives out there? Um, I played League of Legends, so I was about level 20 or so. And I never really felt like I was immersed in it. Like, it was a top-down perspective. And I had, to play, I had to play the game really slow because I didn't really understand what I was doing. And whereas Smite, I immediately started playing it and I just kind of felt immersed. Like I felt when I could outplay people, I felt when I could hit skill shots, when I could hit auto attacks. And whereas League of Legends, you're just kind of right clicking. Grand, you are doing a lot more things, so that's a very simplified way to put it. But with Smite, you you can feel the strafe, you can feel it when you dodge abilities, because in team fights, like they're crazy. Like it's it's five v five. There's things flying past you, you're dodging AoE abilities, your teammates are literally like running right by you, like, help me, help me, help me. So that's just it's like a very immersive experience. So kind of along those lines, uh, you know, the, whenever I was playing the game and, and watching it out there, it feels like Smite is a interesting hybrid of like first-person shooter, third-person shooter experience plus the MOBA experience. Do you think that people who have been playing shooters historically would enjoy Smite more? I would say definitely because, like I said earlier, when I was playing League of Legends, I didn't really feel immersed in the game. When you play Call of Duty, when you play Halo, you feel like you are that person. You feel like you are the one out playing them. So if you're into that style, if you're into being immersed in the action, being immersed in the team fights, like Smite definitely is the game for you. Yeah. Oh, so High Res here announced, uh, or they previously announced, and now you can play it at this event, the Xbox One version of the game. Mm -hmm. This is really fascinating to me because to date there hasn't been a really captivating MOBA experience on consoles. Uh, what are your thoughts on the fact that they're going to have like this other platform available to play the game? Are you planning on playing it there? Do you think any of like the current professionals will switch over or that there will be a separate scene there? I mean, there's so many topics and thoughts on, on the Xbox One. Do you, do you have any thoughts on it? I think it's going to be awesome. Me, personally, I'll stick to PC. I played Halo a lot when I was younger, but 
I've always been a PC guy. Mm -hmm. So I think I think it will have its separate scene, but I don't think it will be nearly as big as the PC scene okay. uh, as far as like internationally because internationally I feel like it's a lot more PC dominant, um, and especially in Asia and Europe. I feel like there's a lot more, I guess, people focusing on PC games. But here I think it might have a small Xbox One region yeah. for tournaments like maybe a few local tournaments a year. But I think a lot of people play on Xbox One, but I don't think there will be an esports scene for it. One of the things that I found interesting yesterday at the Media Day was that they said that, or Hi-Rez uh, had mentioned that if they feel as though a esports scene does start to pop up around the Xbox One, they could see a t uh, time when there are these kind of like two world championships, one for PC, one for Xbox One. As a professional player, especially on the PC side, uh, how do you feel about that? Is that kind of cool for you? Like, would you enjoy seeing a high-level competition on the Xbox One, or would you like them to focus all their efforts on PC, even if there's some competitive interest? I would say that depends on how big the Xbox scene is exactly. Like, if it's a few teams, I would like them to focus more on the PC side, but if the Xbox One side happens to just blow up, like, I would be totally for watching other teams compete on the xbox one and i would just go and cheer them on and hopefully like cognitive could get an xbox one team so i could like have people to root for have people to share strategies with and that'd be a lot of fun but that'd be sick do you think that the strategies and like the metas would move seamlessly between the two platforms or would they have like very different ones because i imagine even if because they've mentioned that like the experience is very very similar across both but even then like the control types probably lend themselves towards different styles of play on different uh, different gods. Uh, so do you think that it would be pretty seamless? I think there would be players that want to play that role, so they're kind of forcing it on themselves, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like hunters would struggle because on PC you're able to make split-second decisions and you're able to turn around instantly, whereas for the Xbox One, you would be turning around slowly. Yeah. You'd be struggling to get out of position. So I think the whole, I guess, burst comps would come into effect because it would be i could just press like a and x and they're dead yeah. whereas hunters like you have to continually auto attack continually strafe and i feel like they would fall off just because how easily you can dodge things on the pc and how easily you can kind of get yourself in or away from a team fight on the pc i feel like on the xbox one um i think the burst comps would definitely be have a bigger impact uh than the uh i guess i would say regular right picks. Yeah. standard yeah. Mm -hmm. now one thing that's kind of interesting to me looking at high res and how they've approached esports is that I feel like they've kind of selected this middle path in comparison to the two other predominant MOBAs, uh, Valve and Riot's uh, respectively, uh, where you, you they run a league, but then there's also like this crowdfunded big event with a, a bigger prize pool even than the, the league one. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about high res's current approach to supporting the esports scene and the pro scene? and well, you know, looking forward to season two, is there any changes that you'd like to see in, and how they support it, either with uh, financial distribution towards the, the finals or, or across the league or anything along those lines? I think it would be awesome to move more towards a League of Legends style where there is an LCS, I guess it would be like Smite Championship yeah. Series for Smite. And because that was just, it's so much fun to watch. And every week you're able to tune into League of Legends like, LAN events like that is crazy like that gets people hyped like every day you get home from work and you're able to watch League of Legends yeah. and I think for Smite they have the SPL so you're playing every week but for them to have a LAN event every week that would that would be crazy and that's that's what I would hope that they would move towards I think that's a little out of reach right now because we're still one of the smaller MOBA games but I think that's definitely in the future for us if we continue to grow and continue to have prize pools as big as the one at Worlds. You are, I know, Atlanta-based. Uh, would you? Would it be cool to have a team house here with all your, your guys and everybody else have their team houses in, in the area and that kind of thing? Yeah, that would be amazing. I love all my teammates right now, and I get along with them really well. But honestly, I think it would be a team house for, like, more of a boot camp thing. Yeah. Like, we would go a month or two months before the LAN event, really focus, and then we'd have our break time. We could have focus more on, I would say, real-life activities because I know – the League of Legends players, like, they're practicing, like, I've heard, like, up yeah. to 16 hours a day, and I feel like you're just stressing yourself out, and I don't I don't know how much you're gaining off of 16 hours a day because I, I do, like, four hours, and then I take a break, and I can kind of digest and really break down what happened in-game, but 
I don't know how they do it the whole 16 hour days. That's, that's ridiculous. And I feel that the four hours and a break, four hours and a break is better. And I feel like you are gaining more, but I mean, I can't really judge them because the players that are doing that, like double lift, like he's the best player in the game. Like that's crazy. <laughs> Just about two more questions here, one of which is, are there any things that you enjoy about the Smite esports scene that you think is unique to, to Smite as an esport itself and that, that maybe isn't around or available to either spectators or pro players or, or whoever in other esports scenes? I would say because we're, I guess, I would say a smaller MOBA, I think it's a lot more easily to talk to us in our Twitch chats yeah. and talk to us and make friends with us because I've had several people that, are, that subscribe to my Twitch and there's they come up to me and they say, oh, I watch your channel all the time. And like I've talked to them. I remember talking to them. So you create bonds with people. And I feel like the bigger games, you kind of lose that because like you have like 30,000, 40,000 viewers and the chat's just going crazy. And I feel because uh, this is a smaller MOBA and I might have like a thousand viewers, but I can still make connections with people and I can still remember them like tournament to tournament, land to land. And the fact that I have, I guess, supporters that are with me through everything, that means everything to me. You guys are just more accessible even at this. Yeah. And then final question is, uh, this is sort of the end of the first season of, of Smite. Uh, and I know high res like every other studio when they do a big uh, event like this, they don't want to talk about mm -hmm. what's in store for, for coming up before, you know, all this stuff is done. But are there any, is there like a wish list or anything that you'd like to see? I mean, setting aside even like the LCS or anything like that, either stuff in game or stuff from the esports side. I would love to travel. Uh, this year we pretty much had all the North American events in Atlanta. So for me, I'm driving. You live here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm driving like an hour south, so I'm not really getting to explore anything. Yeah. So I would love an event maybe in Europe, maybe in China, and really you're getting to explore the world yeah. and play video games professionally. Like That would just be a dream come true. And if I was able to do that, if I was able to travel to Europe or China to play video games in front of yeah. thousands of people, that would just that'd be amazing. Let me sneak one last in. How long until you guys always lose to Asian teams because it happens. It seems like in so many other games, how long is that clock ticking for? Uh, until next year. <laughs> until well, next season. Yeah. So soon you can travel, hopefully, to China to lose to all the Chinese teams. So very good. Well, hey, thank you so much for the interview. I really appreciate it. It's always great to get insight into you know, other, other worlds. And uh, I think that Smite, as from what I've seen here and from meeting people like yourself, seems to have a really good future. Well, I think it was, sorry to cut you off, but yeah. I think it was awesome for you to come out here and kind of explore another scene. Because I've watched a lot of your videos and I'm like, I want to be on that one day. And it just, to have the opportunity means a lot to me that you are, I guess, making an effort into the other scenes and really, I guess, diving like head first. And because like you said, you don't really know that much about the scene, but the fact that you're taking time out to, I guess, give back to the other esports scenes means a lot. The nicest anyone has ever been in an interview I've ever done. I don't know why I cover these other games. I'm just going to cover Smite from here on out. Thank you so much. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of our coverage of all things uh, Smite and more at OnGamers.com.